Welcome to this 10 exercises for shoulder mobility and flexibility designed for climbers. For this session, you will need yourself something soft beneath you like a yoga mat or carpet. And you could also grab some weights if you'd like to make some of the movements a little bit more difficult. So once you have that ready, let's get started in a seated position. We will be reaching the arms to the sides and this can be done with weights or without weights, depending how you're feeling. I like to call this exercise wringing the towel out. So as if you'd like to drop one shoulder down and then the other shoulder down, and then we alternate between that. You can also imagine that you want to reach something to the side as if picking an apple, picking an apple, and then we alternate between these movements. Or another quite useful way to imagine that one palm is facing down and then the other palm is facing more to the back. And again, we alternate between that. Also imagine that you even want to exaggerate this movement, warming up the shoulders. few more like that. And then shake the shoulders, shake the arms. Another movement you can also do with weights or without weights. So we will open up the arms 90 degrees and then dropping the hands down, lowering the hands down. This can be done standing as well, whatever is more comfortable for you. And then we come back into the center, lift the palms up, 90 degrees angle, and lifting the arms up. So straightening the arms up overhead. Bend, lower, and lower, straighten the arms. And let's repeat several times. And same, the same can be done without the weights. You can always try the movement first without the weights. And if it's feeling very easy, you are welcome to add some weights to increase the load. Few more like that. I'm already feeling my shoulders warming up. I hope you do as well. And here you can also play with different speed. You can go very slow or as slow as you want, or you can go a little bit faster. Again, it's quite interesting to offer a variety of movement, of speed for your body. And last time we open, extend, bend, and lower the hands. Beautiful. Let's meet for a scapula push-ups. So we can meet in a tabletop position, fingers spreading wide. And over here, few options. So we can do it on our knees or in a plank, again, depending how you, how much you want to challenge yourself today. Imagine your whole body stays still and we want to bring the shoulder blades together and then shoulder blades apart. So the body stays still and only the area of the shoulder blades are moving. Try not to bend your arms. Imagine that there is a valley between the shoulder blades, so like a river flowing, and then there is no valley in between the shoulder blades. Or another useful analogy for me is dropping my chest towards the ground and pushing the chest away from the ground. And you can also alternate. Perhaps first you start on a tabletop position and then you'd like to increase the difficulty and you could also explore the same in a plank position. I always suggest first to do an easier variation. So 
we can get accustomed to the movement and then increase the difficulty over time. A few more like that. And then sit back onto your heels and shake the hands, shake the arms to relax them a little bit. Now an option is to grab a weight or a book or some object or without it. Again, depending how much you want to challenge yourself, we will do the shoulder halo. So we will be drawing this circle above your head. And again, the whole body stays still. We are only making the circles from our shoulder joint. So grab an object horizontally. Your arms are in this diamond shape and start to draw the circle, the halo above your head to one direction. And then swapping to the other direction. So we are doing around 10 each, but if, it's feel, if this feels too easy, an option would be to pause the video and do a little bit more repetitions, or on the contrary, if it's too difficult, then maybe do a little bit less repetitions and also play and explore with different weights. Let's transition to shoulder taps. This can be done laying on the belly, legs behind straight, or from a tabletop position. So, arms wide apart. Maybe I will face you first. So, arms wide apart. Imagine that you want to drop one of your shoulders down on the ground and looking back behind you. Coming back into the center, the other shoulder drops down. So, this is one option where your hips are above your knees. You can continue like that. Or another option would be while laying on the ground, arms wider apart, and again dropping one shoulder to the ground and another shoulder to the ground. So you choose whichever version you'd like to do. Today I want to do from a tabletop, and let's do it for a couple of moments. Couple of more taps each side. And let's sit back onto your heels once again, shaking the arms, shaking the shoulders. Another one which I really like is reverse tabletop plus one arm reach. This can be done again with weights if you'd like to make it more difficult. If this is the case, I would suggest to have the weights somewhere behind you so you could grab them easily. So feet can be hip distance apart, arms behind you, fingers facing to whichever direction is comfortable for you. We will lift the hips up and then we will lower them down. So this is the first option. You lift the hips up, maybe looking up and lowering. Another option would be to lift the hips and then lift the right arm up and reach it back behind you. And we continue on the other side. And here with the weights, you could grab a weight. So this needs a little bit more coordination. And then when you reach with the weight, you reach back, come back into the center, lower the weight down. And same on the other side, you pick up the weight, you lift and you come back down. And let's repeat a couple of times on your preferred variation.
one more each side. And then let's sit down, extend your legs for a moment to relax, shake the legs. Now let's do a dolphin's pose. So over here we will come on to the forearms and the idea is to stretch your armpits. Your legs can be bent as much as you'd like. Let's lift the hips up and imagine you want to stretch your armpits. Push the ground away from you with your forearms. And here let's stay for a couple of moments in stillness. Breathing through the nose. And another option would be to bring your feet a little bit further apart. And from a dolphin's pose, come in onto the forearm plank. And back into the dolphin. Forearm plank. Let's repeat a couple of times. few more, doing very well. And then lower your knees down for a moment, sit back behind you to relax your arms and shoulders. We will be transitioning into a puppy pose, so active and pa passive puppy pose. So your hips can stay above your knees. Let's extend your arms further apart in front of you. And here the active version is with elbows lifting. And then the passive version is lowering the forearms down, again stretching the armpits. From here you could go back into an active puppy pose, or which is also called melting heart, and lowering your forearms back down. Let's alternate between these two. on your own rhythm. And now everyone let's meet with the forearms down. We stay here or another option would be to bend your arms and as if with your thumbs you'd like to touch your lower neck. So bending your arms. And breathing here through the nose. One more breath. Let's extend the arms and sitting back onto the heels for a moment of stillness, relaxing the arms. Now let's lower the belly down onto the ground. We will focus on the back stretch. So over here, a few options. You can have your arm bent 90 degrees or extended. Again, whichever feels nicer for you. And uh, elbow can be in line with your shoulder. And then we will turn to the left side. So here you can support yourself with the left hand. And another option, your left leg, it can be bent and the left foot goes behind you to intensify the stretch. Breathing through the nose. If you'd like to feel the stretch more intense, you could bring some activation by pushing your forearm, your elbow down into the ground. So the right elbow on the forearm. Take an inhalation here through the nose. Exhale, and let's swap sides, come back into the center, and the other arm is bent 90 degrees or extended. Elbow in line with the shoulder, and let's turn to the side. And here an option to bring your right foot back, 
supporting yourself with your right hand on the right fingertips. And finding a stretch which feels good for you. If you'd like to bring more activation in this part, you could press your left forearm, left elbow down into the ground. Let's take a breath in, breath out, and one more inhale. Exhale, and slowly come back into the center. We will be moving on our sides, so you can come on the right side. And imagine that you want to draw big zeros with your top arm, so with your left arm. So these circles can be done with weights or without weights. While you do the circles, also check that your fingers are always touching the ground. Or this is the intention that we always want our fingertips to touch the ground except, of course, when we travel above our body. So for me, these shoulder circles feel really good after climbing or during my rest days when I have some muscle pain. One more circle. And let's transition to the other side. So now laying on your left. Maybe making a pillow with the arm underneath and big circles with your top arm. So with your right arm. So imagining that you're drawing a big zero with your fingertips. few more. And when you do the circles again, you can play with different speed. You can do them faster, you can do them slower. As mentioned, you can add some weights, one kilo, half a kilo, or you can do it without the weights, which is also absolutely perfect. One more circle. Okay, so we are finished with these 10 exercises for shoulder mobility and flexibility. So I hope that was useful for you. My recommendation would be to do this routine one or two times per week. And you can also pick and choose. So you can pick some of the movements, exercises that you like to do and add them to your training routine before or after climbing. So I will see you next time for another YouTube yoga session here on my YouTube channel.